what multiplies to give x squared plus 5x plus 6? In this lesson, we're going to look at how to factor a trinomial, so a polynomial with three terms. We're going to begin by building this polynomial in the center and then take a look at what would the length and the width be. Those are the two factors. So we're going to begin with our squared piece and we're going to tuck it in the corner here. And then we know we have five X's. So those are the rectangles. And because this is a positive five, they're going to be the green rectangles. So when we go to build this, we're going to put one along that side, one along that side, one along that side, one along that side. And we're just going to keep building until we have all five there. And then we we have six little ones that we're going to take and fill in the bottom in order to create that rectangle. We're then going to look and say, okay, so this polynomial is represented by these pieces here. We've built the rectangle. What is the length of that rectangle? Well, we can see this is a length of x and then one, two, three. So we have x plus three. This has a width of x plus one, two, which means that the factors of this polynomial are x plus three times x plus two. Multiplying these together will give us that trinomial. Now we will be given a trinomial and asked to factor it, create those brackets. We'll be given a trinomial and we will be creating those brackets. But let's try looking at the opposite process for a second in order to figure out where some of these numbers are coming from. So if I start with the factors and we multiply this out, a binomial times a binomial will get foiled. So we're going to multiply the first terms to get that x squared. We're going to multiply the outside terms to get 2x. We're going to multiply the inside terms to get 7x and we're going to multiply the last terms to get 14. These two terms combine to get that 9x. The same thing happens over here. So we have the first terms multiplied to get m squared. The outside terms multiply to get that negative 5m. The inside terms multiply to get that 3m. And then 3 times negative 5 is that negative 15. These two terms, like terms, combine to get us that middle term. In our trinomial, c is the constant term. It's the one term that does not have a variable of x attached to it. So in this particular one, c is my 14, and we can see that this 14 comes by multiplying the last terms together in each of those factors. The same thing here, this is my c term, and we can see that that comes from multiplying the last terms together in each of those brackets. And the same thing happens up here. So this six is a product of those three and those two little ones. In our trinomial, b is the numerical coefficient in front of that x term. So in this example here, this is the x term, 9 is the numerical coefficient from that term, and we can see that this 9 is a result of adding together the 2x plus the 7x. 2x is the outside product, 7x is the inside product. The same thing here, so we have negative 2 is our b value that comes from adding together negative 5 and positive 3. That is the outside product product plus the inside product. So to factor a trinomial, we need to find those two integers that have a product of c and a sum of b. So what two numbers will multiply together to get the c value and add to get the b value? So in this case, we can see that we have a b value of 8 and a c value of 12. What two integers multiply to get 12 and add to get 8, 6, and 2? We can then go ahead and set up our binomials and think about reverse foiling. So we know the first term in each bracket will multiply back to get x squared. So that's going to be an x times an x. And then these two numbers are the product of those outside and inside factors. The order doesn't matter. So I know these are the outside and inside products. So this is a 1. So I'm going to say 1 times what will give me one of those numbers. And because it is a 1, it doesn't matter which I put in there. So let's maybe put the 6 here. So we've used the 6. And then 1 times what will give me that that other factor of 2 and we can put the 2 in here and then the last term is a check is 2 times 6 going to give us 12 and then quickly foil this out so we've got x squared 6x plus 2x is 8x and 2 times 6 is 12 so these are the factors that we can multiply together to get that polynomial in our next example, we're looking for two integers that are going to multiply to 20 and add to 9. And they have to be integers, so either positive or negative whole numbers. And in each of these examples for this lesson, the numerical coefficient in front of that x squared term is always going to be 1 for today. As you can see, you really need to know your multiplication facts. But if you have really large numbers that you're working with, or if you're just not sure, which of these would you start with? Well, let's say we started with positive 9. What two numbers add to 9? We have 8 plus 1, we have 2 plus 7, we have 6 plus 3, 
we have 100 plus negative 91, we have negative 27 plus 36, we have negative 20 plus 29, and we can keep going. There is an infinite number of possibilities that will add to positive 9. So that's not super helpful. How many possibilities are there that will multiply to 20? Well, this is a lot more limiting. There's only certain numbers that will multiply to 20. So we can go over to the side here, the margin of our paper, and we can begin to make a list. So we want to go in order. 1 times 20 is 20. 2 times 10 is 20. 3 will not divide evenly. 4 times 5 is 20. And if we go in order, you can see how we loop back around here. So we know we've got them all. But we can also have two negative factors that will multiply to give a positive 20. So I'm going to take each of these pairs of factors and I'm going to have a negative 1 times a negative 20 will also give positive 20, as will the negative values of 2 and 10 and 4 and 5. So these are all of the factors that will multiply to get 20. Now we're looking for which ones will add to get positive 9. So we can go ahead and add up here. 1 plus 20 is 21, 2 plus 10 is 12, and we can see that the ones that we want are this 4 plus 5. Those will give us 9. As you can see, this is going to be a lot more time consuming, but it's one strategy you can use if you're really stuck. All right, so now we're trying to factor this trinomial. We're going to go ahead and set up our binomials, and then we're basically reverse foiling again. So what could multiply together to get back to that n squared? We can have an n times an n. And remember that these numbers come from the product of the outside and the inside terms. So we're going to say 1 times what will give us one of those values, and because it is a 1, we can just put one of them in there. Then I'm going to put in the 5 just to switch things up here. And then we're going to say here 1 times what will give us the other factor of 4 and then quickly foil it out to make sure you've done it correctly. So we have n squared, that's good, 5n plus 4n is 9n and then 4 times 5 is 20. In our next trinomial we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get positive 6 and add to get negative 5. Now if this is a negative 5 we know that a negative times a negative is going to give us a positive value. So I know both of those numbers will be negative and they are going to be negative 2 and negative 3. So then we can go ahead again set up your binomials x times x gets us back to that first term of x squared, and then you're going to say 1 times what will give us one of those numbers, and because in every case today this is a 1, you can probably see that we're just plunking these numbers in here, and then we're going to say 1 times what will give us that other number, the last term is a check, and then quickly foil it out, so we have x squared, negative 2x, minus 3x will give us that negative 5x, and then a negative 3 times a negative 2 is positive 6. Now the signs are really important because as you can see, this is a positive 6, this is a negative 6, but everything else is essentially the same. So now we need those two numbers that will multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. So the two numbers are going to be negative 6 and positive 1, and then again we're going to say what times what gets us that x squared term, so it's going to be x times x, and then we're going to say 1 times what will give us one of those numbers and if I choose to put the negative 6 there that's our outside product and then 1 times what on the inside product will give us a value of 1 and then quickly foil it out to make sure that we do in fact get this trinomial back. So in each of these cases we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get that c value and add to get that b value. Once you get those two numbers, if and only if the leading coefficient in front of that squared term happens to be a 1, you can see the pattern here. We're taking these numbers and they essentially are the values that are going into the bracket there. Now this only will work if we have a 1 as the leading coefficient. For any trinomial, we start the same way. So we're looking for those two numbers. If we happen to have two variables in a trinomial, that's okay. We just start the same way. So m times m gets us back to m squared. And then because we have an n here, we're still going to use those numbers and say 1 times what will give us one of those values. So I happen to choose the negative 3, and then we're going to put the second variable here. So we end up with negative 3mn plus 5mn gives us that 2mn, and then 5n times negative 3n is that negative 15n squared. So if you see the two variables here, just remember we're going to have on that second term in each bracket the other variable. In our next one, we now have a number in front of that x squared term. 
the first thing you want to do is check, is there a greatest common factor that we can remove? So we always want to check that first. And in this case, we can see that we can remove a three. In order to be completely factored, you're now going to take a look at the inside trinomial and you're going to see if this can be factored further. So are there two numbers that will multiply to 12 and add to eight? And we can see that there are. We have six times two gives us 12. Six plus two gives us eight. So we can go ahead and factor the inner trinomial. So this particular polynomial has has three factors. The same thing with this one. Is there a greatest common factor? So we're going to remove that xy first. Are there two numbers that will multiply to negative 15 and add to two? And as you get more and more proficient with this, you're not gonna write all this down every time. You're just going to say, yes, we're gonna have a positive five and a negative three, but you need to make sure that you get your signs correct. So in this case, we're gonna have positive five and negative three because this has a one now in front of that squared term. And to check this, we're going to foil this out and then we're going to distribute this xy back in to make sure you get the original trinomial. We're now given a trinomial and we're asked to determine two values for b that would allow this to be factored. So we know that we need two numbers that will multiply to four and then add to that b value. So I'm going to begin by setting up a table and what are some factors that would multiply to four? So if we go in order, we have one times four, two times two. Because this is a positive four, both values can either be positive or both values can be negative. So if we go ahead now and add them up, we can see that this is a negative b B, so I want to put a positive value in here because if I put a negative value in, a negative times a negative would then switch that sign to a positive. So our choices here would be that positive four or that positive five. And then you can even go ahead and check this. So if we were to put a four in the place of B, we still have that minus B and then we can go ahead and factor that. And if we put a five in the place of B, we still have that minus five and then we can go ahead and factor that just to make sure it factors. So similar over here, we're looking for the value of b. We know we need two numbers that multiply to negative 10. We can go over here and set up a table. So if we go in order, we know we've got 1 times 10, 2 times 5, 3 does not divide evenly into 10, nor does 4, and then we loop back around here to 5. Now, because this is a negative 10, I know that one of those numbers has to be negative. So I just made the first number negative and then the second number negative, and then we can go ahead and add them up. And because this is a positive b here, I want to put those positive values in. So B could be either three or nine, and then we can even go ahead and check this. So if I substitute a three in for B, it's factorable. If I substitute a nine in for B, it's also factorable. I get the negative 10 in both cases. We're now looking for two values of C that would allow this trinomial to be factored. So we know the two numbers need to multiply to this value and they need to add to that negative eight. So again, I'm gonna go over here and set up a table. And I'm going to begin by saying, what are some possibilities of numbers that could add to negative eight? And this is not an exhaustive list. Remember, there's an infinite number of possibilities that could add to negative eight, but let's list a few and then begin adding them up. And because they will be multiplying to a negative C value, I know one of those numbers needs to be a positive and one of those numbers needs to be a negative. So I'm going to choose 20 and nine, and I'm going to take the absolute value of those and just give the positive value. And you can see that when we go to substitute them in, if I put a nine in for C, we're gonna have that minus nine, which allows it to factor. And if I put that 20 in for C, we're gonna have that minus 20, which allows it to factor. I'm not putting in a negative nine because minus a negative would turn that to a positive, which isn't what we're given. And in our next one here, we're now looking for two values that multiply to this value and are going to add to that positive two. So we're gonna go over here. Now this is not an exhaustive list, but here are some possibilities of numbers that could add to positive two. And again, because this is a negative, I want one positive and one negative value. So we can begin adding these up and then we're gonna choose two. There's more than two possibilities, but let's just go with eight and 15. And then again, we can check this. So we put an eight in the place of C and we've got that minus eight. We can factor that and get two values that will add to two when we combine those like terms. And the same thing when we put a 15 in the place of that C, we get that minus 15. And finally, we're gonna do three last examples where we have a trinomial that we need to factor factor completely, but our squared term happens to be a binomial. So if you take a look at the brackets, do we have the same thing in both brackets? And if we do, one strategy that you could use is choose a variable to represent what that x plus a could equal. So I'm going to pick w, choose a variable other than x because we don't want to get confused. If we substitute x plus a for w, now we have a trinomial that we're very comfortable factoring. What are two numbers that multiply to two and add to three? 
two plus one, so we can go ahead and factor that. But because there is no W in this original equation, we need to now substitute back. So W is equal to X plus A. So we're gonna go ahead and say X plus A and then plus two, X plus A and then plus one. And just check, are there any like terms in the brackets we can combine? There are not, so this is now factored. The second one again, we have a squared term as a binomial. Do we have the same thing in each bracket? And we do, so let's try the same strategy. So if W is equal to what's in that bracket, let's go ahead and substitute that in. Now this is very easy to factor. What are two numbers that multiply to negative five and add to positive four? Positive five and negative one. So we can go ahead and factor this. And you have to remember to substitute back. So W is equal to X minus B. We're gonna go ahead and fill that in. And then just check, do we have any like terms in the brackets? We don't, so we can't combine them, they're finished. Now, if you were to actually go back here and simplify this, foil this out, distribute the four in, combine your like terms together, and then factor, you will end up with the same thing. It's just, it's going to be much more time consuming. Okay, so now that we have the hang of this, we don't necessarily need this step anymore. Take a look, we can see that we have the same thing in brackets. Because this is a one, we're going to look for two numbers that multiply to that negative 24 and add to negative two. So I know I'm going to have negative six and positive four. So we can go ahead and have negative six and positive four four and then check do we have any like terms and in this case we can combine three minus six in the first bracket and then we can combine three plus four in the second bracket and we have now factored that original trinomial.